Montreal was exactly what I needed in my mid to late 20s, and that is why the city has a special place in my heart. Hey guys, we will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. Please subscribe. What's up, Mabu High Squad? How are you doing? Did you sleep well? I hope so. OMG, Mabu High Squad. Okay, there's RJ. Yes. Um, if you're new to the vlogs, I'm Mikey Bustos. Welcome to the vlogs. We are here in New York City at JFK Airport, and we are now flying to Montreal, Canada. Yes! Um, so, if you're just joining us, we're on some, like, long tour around, like, North America. Um, mostly for work, but also for vacation. And guys, I cannot wait to take you to Montreal, Canada. Yes! This is gonna be fun. All right, we are sitting here. All right, let's open a window. Yee <laughs> also joining us is Nika. Yes, from Philippines, our cousin, and Edmark. Oh There's Edmark. Hey, Edmark. Hello. All right. So Edmark and Nika are our cousins. We all live in the Philippines. And I'm excited to take Edmark and Nika to Canada for the first time. This is their first. Well, Ed Mark's first time in Canada. In Montreal. Ooh. Bienvenue au Canada. Welcome to Canada. Yay. <laughs> yeah. All righty, we are here at Le Square Philippe in downtown Montreal. All right, guys, let's see the room. Ooh, oh, this is beautiful. It's like an apartment style apartment. room. <gasps> Whoa, come see the place. I want to film your reactions. Oh my God. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, this is like, uh, guys, yeah. look at this place. It's so beautiful, RJ. This is a hotel. This is apartment. Yeah, this is totally an apartment. Wow, look at the workstation. <gasps> Look at our little kitchenette. Wow. It's big, right? Look at this pillar. Wow. And we have a fridge. Yay, I'm gonna make overnight oats. And look, we have a coffee maker. Awesome. We have oven, we can cook. We got a table. Oh, this is so awesome. Wow, look at our bathroom. A carry Asian. Bathtub. Oh my. Nice high ceiling, and here's another room. All right, beauty. Let's see the view. Oh, gorgeous. So, so nice. Wow, guys. Oh my goodness, look at the bedrooms. Gorgeous bed. Amazing, Harry Asian. Wow. And again, the view. Montreal, I've missed you. I've never forgotten my love. Let's do our tradition. Wee! Ah. <laughs> Comfortable bed. All right, guys. So I just made our overnight oats for the next two days. Um, so my whole trip here in Canada and in the U.S., I've been preparing like up my overnight recipe in dried, and then I just add water, and then I eat a little bit every day so I can get my nutrients and fiber and that way I can at least stay within my diet but also you know eat foods that I normally wouldn't eat I can cheat a little bit but what's most important is that I get my daily nutrients vitamins fiber fiber is so important so I just added water to the mix and now I'm just gonna slap this on stick it in the fridge to soak for five hours and then it'll be ready to eat yay 
All right, guys, so first things first, we're gonna work out. Because, you know, health is important. And plus, RJ and I are still trying to adjust our circadian cycle, because we're jet lagged. And working out during the day really helps. Oh, what a beautiful gym. <gasps> Look at that. All right, all the basics. Yay. And then look at this pool, it's a lap pool. I wonder how cold it is. Let's see. Oh, it's warm. Let's see. Oh, it's, it's comfortable. It feels like our pool at home. Yeah, it's warm. All right. Yeah, that's gonna be some good cardio. And this gym is 24 hours, all right. Mabuhai squad, we are here at a bougie French restaurant. Mm. Look at that. You guys know what this is? This is bison. So it's the It's a French brasserie. French cuisine in a brasserie. Oh, in a brasserie. Wow. So guys, this here, you might remember him from the vlogs. This is RJ's cousin, Ramil, who lives here. Yes. <laughs> and he took us to this awesome place. As I was saying, this is raw bison. This is bison tartare. This is grilled octopus. And what is this again? Salad. Oh, salad. Mm. Ed Mark's trying the French onion soup. Yeah, I want to learn French, so I ordered French onion soup. <laughs> <laughs> Go! Mm. Very good. Awesome. Yeah. Let's try this bison, guys. Mm. I don't think I've ever Not even like had a bison tartare. Mmm, sweet. Because I work for a mm. if I get it's it, mixed with rice, spices and onion and some sweet marinade. Mm. So good. Mm. So the octopus with tabbouleh and chickpeas. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh, guys. The octopus. My boy's got The bison and that octopus. Five my boy, it starts. Guys, full bra and like a whole bunch of other stuff. Mm. Mm. Oh my god. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh, I think that is the best full bra I've ever had. You gotta mix this. Put on the bread, this jello stuff, and then this like raspberry reduction. Oh, it goes so well together. Wow, guys, salmon. I got the filet mignon. Oh, ho, ho, ho. you got the beef cheek. How is it? Beef cheek. Enjoy. See? Oh my gosh, guys, so fancy. Look at that. Let's try this. Oh, this is so rare. Love it. Look at mashed potatoes, mushrooms. It's so soft. Mm. It's so soft. Lola can eat it. <laughs> my boy's glad this is five my boy stars too. Guys, we are here in old Montreal. Beautiful, right? It looks co cobblestone street. Looks very European. And there's the harbor, like the old port, it's called. Gorgeous. Guys, this is new, this Ferris wheel thing. This is new. This was not here when I lived here. Guys, look at the buildings. Aren't they gorgeous? Buildings here are really, really pretty. All right, cobblestone floors. It's actually so pretty at night. Look at that. Wow. Man, it's been a while since I've been here. I was telling Edmark and Nika that this is kind of like Intramuros in Manila, which is old Manila, um, except Intramuros is more Spanish, right? And this is more French.
All right, guys. This here, man, just a warning. If you go in and have a bite of this, your life will be changed. This is Mr. Puffs, guys. I am not gonna eat it, but I would love for Nika and Ed Mark to try it. I mean, just look at that. Seriously. You can even have it with ice cream. Ed Mark, I want you guys to try Mr. Puffs. Oh. RJ's excited. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say Puff Daddy. Okay, guys, go. You have to eat it while it's hot. Go. Josh, look, I'll do the makeup thing. Mm. Eat my boy's one. Wait, wait, you have to cover your eyes to do the makeup thing. There. See? Mm. Eat, guys. I'll okay. show you. Go. Just kidding. Mm. How is it? Mm. Awesome. I have a blast for it. All right. How is it, RJ? Good. So good. What do you think, Nakes? Oh, guys, I'm just gonna eat with my eyes. Mmm. <laughs> guys, this is the Notre Dame. It's a replica of the Notre Dame in France. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. Gorgeous! Good morning, Mabuhai squad. How are you doing? Did you sleep well? We're here having breakfast at the hotel. Yes. And guys, Montreal bagels. They're famous mm, and they're so good. But um, they're better fresh, like right when they're baked. They kind of look like that. And it just reminds me of old times. So yummy. With a little bit of cream cheese in there. It's been a while since I've seen this. This here is called pork creton. You just spread it on your toast or crackers or whatever. Try it. It's made of pork. Yeah. Try it. You have to spread it on your bread. I used to eat it a lot back in the day. It needs to be refrigerated. Um, I'm not sure. It's like made of like pork fat and like joints and stuff, I think. So, high and... Good? It's good, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can bring some to our room, I think. Ted Mark's here. How's the bagel, cuz? Oh, it's very good. All right. Yeah, I thought the bagel is barking. Oh, Beagle! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so good, huh? Yeah. Cream cheese, Beagle, mm -hmm. perfect. And then after you have to try the Creto. Creto is like a... It's made of pork. pork. Oh. I think it's like made of different pork parts. Mm -hmm. Oh. Right. Creto. Uh, it's like meat. It's, it's meaty, yeah. Mmm, it's like a burger patty. Yeah, a burger patty, yeah. Wow, very good. All right, sun's out. We're about to head out and go explore the city. So, Mabu High Squad, I wanted to do a little story time um, just to share why Montreal in particular really is an important place and has been monumental in my life. Uh, so, okay, let's let's go back in time now. 2003, as I've mentioned before, I was a finalist on Canadian Idol. It was the craziest, most intense, and amazing event to ever happen in my life. Even though I only placed 8th in the top 11 finals, it really did change my life, guys. So, um, I continued to do music. Um... As mentioned in the last vlog, I was signed to an American management company, so I moved out to New York City, and my career was very promising as a 23-year-old. 
in music, right? But then, New York didn't really work out for me, sadly, and I realized that just because you're signed to an American label in the Big Apple, it does not mean success. So I ended up moving back to Canada, tried to do some work, have some concerts in Toronto just to make ends meet, right, as a musician. Also, at the same time, was trying to start a career in entertainment in the Philippines. So I hooked up with a new manager who tried to introduce me to the Philippine market. So I had traveled to the Philippines, I believe three on three occasions. I, you know, I did the rounds, met all the record labels, management companies, did all the television guestings, radio guestings. I opened for Pussycat Dolls um, at the Araneta Coliseum for 9,000 people. And then I opened for Christina Aguilera for her Back to Basics tour for I don't remember, like 12,000 people, it was massive. And after all of that, guys, I still didn't manage to get a contract. They had given me all kinds of reasons, like, you know, there already is an R&B, his name is Chris Lawrence, my friend. There already is a Chris Lawrence in the Philippines. And, you know, it just, it just wasn't my time. And I remember, you know, after all those failures, right, being discouraged, being like, okay, now what? Then my management dropped me because they were like, sorry, we can't really do anything with you. It's not working out. So sadly, I went back to Canada. I needed a fresh restart because it was almost like I was at a point where I was like, okay, so I can't go on like this forever. I'm so in debt and I have a certain pride, you know, like, I, do I go back to work? Like to the workforce, do corporate? And does that mean I'm giving up my dream of being an entertainer. So I did, I chose the latter. But because I didn't want to do that in Toronto and like go to work in Toronto, I decided to move to Montreal, this city, and start a new life, like completely fresh. I didn't have to be ashamed that, you know, my entertainment career didn't work out because Montreal was, for me, was kind of a completely different place. It's like French Canada, so I knew no friends here, all of that. I could really escape and just reset and start a new life, which is what I did. I moved to Montreal. Eventually, I got a job working in an office, a nine to five. And I remember that being such a change because I had gone from performing on stages as, you know, the star to like working as a corporate worker in an office. Um, and I remember on my first day, m one of my coworkers came down to introduce uh, herself and be like, and she was like, hey, so are, are you the Canadian Idol guy everyone's talking about, the new Canadian Idol guy? I was like, yeah, I am. And they were so nice to welcome me. And that began a new like circle of friends that I made at that work. I was living in just a studio apartment, which we're gonna go visit apparently tomorrow. Ooh, I can't wait. And I just like lived life, but, Little did I know, that was exactly what I needed, guys. I needed to live life a little bit in order to enter my next phase. Because, guys, after living here in Montreal for two years or so, I moved back to Toronto and started YouTube. And that was the, when everything changed. I went viral on YouTube, um, doing comedy, Filipino comedy, and then a TV network in the Philippines called me up, hey, come to Philippines, we wanna sign you. And a TV commercial snack brand called me up and wanted me to be the face on all 19 of their commercials. So I flew to Philippines and that's when I ended up staying there and doing show business. Signed with the TV network, did television shows, movies, sang tons of mall shows, all of that. It was like the start of my dream as an entertainer. So I attribute Montreal as like, the hard reset that I needed in life. Um, I feel while I was here, I gained new life skills, you know, like living on my own, doing my own laundry. I love the culture here. I learned French. I can speak French now. Um, I learned how to communi communicate and relate to different kinds of people because here in Montreal, there are so many different cultures and they all speak different languages and it's crazy. Every, like the average person here in Montreal speaks three languages. It's insane. English, French, and like some other language that is, you know, that they might know. Whereas in Toronto, it's not usually kind of, it's not like that as much. So yeah, 
Montreal was exactly what I needed in my mid to late 20s and that is why the city has a special place in my heart and I'm happy to be back. There's actually more to the story but I'll be sharing that throughout the vlog later maybe. Gorgeous day to go for a walk. We're just kind of walking around, no plans, just sightseeing. Why is it? Why is it red? Yeah, the leaves, the, the, the logo of Canada. Was... Oh, maple? Oh, that's maple. This that's a maple leaf, yeah. Maple. No, this is not maple, but yeah. there are a lot of maple trees in Canada. What did you say, cuz? You wanna see my maple? <laughs> <laughs> and guys, we need to buy maple syrup to bring back to Philippines. Yeah. It's gotta be legit. Because in the Philippines, it's usually not real maple syrup. It's like corn syrup. It's just not the same, right guys? You fellow Canadians, not the same. Taking pictures now. Look at the colors of the tree. All right. So RJ really wanted to come travel to Canada at this time of the year because of the changing colors of the trees. In the Philippines, obviously it's a tropical country. We don't have fall and like, we don't have these cool fall colors. So it's it's really neat. Ooh, flowers are nice. So nice. Look at that. Okay, RJ wants me to take a photo of him. Okay, wait. Cool, look at this guys. Planters with car doors on the sides. See that? <laughs> so I find French Canadians, um, those from Quebec, to be very cultured. Like their tastes are a bit more fine <laughs> and I'm, I don't mean to offend the anglophone community in Canada at all it's just that I find like English Canada is more I don't know they're just more Ameri American like but French Canada they seem to be more into like the fine arts you know they still appreciate live music in the bars and that kind of thing um, this is Place des Arts, where they have like different shows, concerts, ballet shows, things like that. Um, the fashion generally, I find, is slightly better here <laughs> in Montreal than in Toronto. Um, everyone kind of like dresses up and they look really nice. I think it is the French influence. Um, but yeah. Okay, RJ. Some French. Uh, Pronounce that. Over. What? Over. Over. Yeah. Over. Over. Huh? It means open. Do dimanche. Where? Where are you uh, reading mardi. that? Du dimanche. Dimanche. Au mardi. It means from Sunday to Tuesday. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> RJ was like, it sounds like JJ Moon. <laughs> <laughs> from Philippines. <laughs> we are Jejemon from Philippines. <laughs> Look at this beautiful church. Oh my gosh, guys, guess where we're going? We are going to Dollarama. I love this store. So when I first moved out here and moved into my own studio, all I needed to do was visit Dollarama and it had everything. RJC Christmas stuff. Look, candy canes. See, for the Christmas tree, but our, our Christmas tree doesn't have candy canes. Yeah, I know, it's like two bucks now and three bucks. They got arts and crafts, stuff you can paint. Ooh, candles, lighters, cool lanterns, cute baskets. I mean, everything. Look, pine cones, potpourri, decorations. They've got food, of course drinks, snacks, see, energy drink, Gatorade, cereals, it just goes on and on, literally everything is here, Halloween stuff, awesome. Okay guys, we're here in a mall because this apparently is a Barbie museum, the largest Barbie museum in the world. What? This is so random. Wow. Oh my gosh, look at how many Barbies are everywhere. Wow, there's an Indian Barbie. How neat. I wonder if there's a Filipino Barbie. Oh yeah, see, Barbies from different countries here. 
Wow, this is incredible. Be, let's see if there's a Filipino Barbie. See, Russia. See? Oh, Maria all of the. Philippines. Where? Maria Clara. Maria, oh my Maria gosh, Clara that gown. is one. The one. How cute. Is she wearing. Okay, she's not wearing a turno, but that's like a. Filipiniana. Then. Yeah, Filipiniana traditional wear. Oh, how cool. My Philippines. Yeah. yeah. Hilarious, guys. Look, this is a fashion show runway. And guys, look at the cameras, they're flashing. They're legit taking photos. What a collection of Barbies. Seriously, like look at some of the details of these dresses. Wow. I can't get over. Like there's a Wonder Woman Barbie. Hey, what's Elvis doing here? <laughs> Is this a Ken Elvis? I dream of Genie. 80s reference. Mary Poppins Barbie. Oh, there's even a Pirates of the Caribbean Ken. Flintstones. The Adams Family, Prince William and Kate Middleton. Interesting. Wow, yeah, seriously. Or just like, this is Miss Universe cultural gown round. Which is your favorite, RJ? Look, they're all beautiful. Yeah. Guys, we're now walking towards that mountain. Look at the colors. Beautiful. Wow, it is so pretty up here. Everywhere is Instagrammable. Look at RJ. RJ, you fit right in. Huh? I swear in another universe you were a Montrealer. I'm a French. <laughs> You're a French? Bucopai. French Bucopai? <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, she offered to take a pic. Thanks. The Gale is the best place. Thank you. Are you guys going to Thank school here? So much. No, we're just visiting. <laughs> guys, she totally mistaken us for students. <laughs> of course. Do we look like students? <laughs> we're in our 40s. Well, you, RJ is going to be in his 40s soon. Ed Mark is on his way. 20s. So this is all like McGill, University of McGill, I guess housing or classrooms? I don't know. But that's why I think that lady thought we were just students. Okay, RJ is singing in public, which comes to show you he's happy. <laughs> that Montreal spirit is getting to his bones. Why are you why are you turning away from the vlogging camera, RJ? <laughs> RJ's so shy. Okay, <laughs> Edmark. Hi. Edmark, say that word. Say it again? My son? No. What? Guess again. Maison. Close. Maison. Maison. It Maison. means house. Okay, so S is gonna be Z. Maison. Maison. Uh it's a Z sound, yeah. Oh guys, oh there it goes. Look at that white squirrel. That's the first time I've ever seen a white squirrel. Beautiful parks Montreal has. Like, the best for dog walking. <laughs> I first bought my Toronto dog, Pinoy, here in Montreal, and me and Pinoy went everywhere. So if you have a dog, man, Montreal is the place to be. You know what's so cool? I never realized like how neat it is to have leaves fall off and onto the ground but seeing rj nika and edmark want to take pictures in the leaves i'm not dead made me appreciate that yeah fall season is pretty awesome oh you guys look so good Thank you. Omar. look at this tree so red see the leaves all right i love maple trees <laughs> Nika was saying, the real Christmas tree, <laughs> referring to this pine tree. Say it again. Barbier. Barbier. Barbier, Barbier, Barbier dolls. Barbier, Barbier dolls. dolls. <laughs> Means barber. Okay guys, I'm so excited because we are here at one of my favorite like restaurant chains. It's Lebanese food and the restaurant is called Amir. Lebanese food is popular here in Montreal because, I don't know, well, there's a big Lebanese population here in Montreal because in Lebanon, they speak French. And the government makes it easier for immigrants from French-speaking countries to migrate here to Quebec. So there's Lebanese food is pretty popular here. And OMG, Amir is my favorite place. Okay, guys, we're eating. Look at that. Look at that. Mm, healthy too. 
How is it? Yummy. Yummy. Mm -hmm. We we actually ordered a few plates. Oh. Guys, this garlic sauce is the Mix. bomb. Here are the pitas. You can put the all of the oh. ingredients inside bread. OMG, guys, it's been years. Okay, so you could open it like this, but let's try. Okay, just gonna take the chicken, a little bit of tabbouleh, the garlic sauce. Guys, must the garlic sauce. All right, add some beets. Look at how healthy that is, guys. Then, chickpeas, hot sauce. Oh, then you just kind of wrap it and eat it. Mm. 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 Sit in the spot. Mm. The beets. My boy is gone. This Amir's five my boy high star. Mabuhay squad, welcome to l'oratoire. This is the oratory, St. Joseph's oratory, I believe. And we usually take tourists here, our tourist friends here, because it's just really beautiful. See this wall of canes? Apparently it's from people who've come here and who were crippled but healed. And so they left their canes here. Like healed through miracle. So here's a part where you can actually touch the mountainside and see like the water trickles from the mountain. It's like actual rainwater. Cool, right? Like this entire oratory is built on the side of a mountain. It's pretty crazy. Good morning, Mabuhay squad. How are you doing? Did you sleep well? I hope so. Guys, this morning we're checking out this cool place, look. So we're in the middle of this like random neighborhood because Edmark found this place on social media, on TikTok. Uh, it's called Drogeria Fine Conserve Montreal. <laughs> Apparently they have very good gnocchi. It's like a pasta, so let's see how their gnocchi is. Yes. And it's only like five, six dollars? Amazing. Interesting. And they serve it with chopsticks. See? You eat it with chopsticks. How cool. Wow. Guys, look at it. This is spicy. Yep. And this is regular. Regular, yeah. Wow, guys. What an interesting take on gnocchi. Okay. Uh, no, they told in TikTok that they have the best gnocchi. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Thank goodness for TikTok. Okay. Let's try it, guys. Try some of this. I love how, how it's with chopsticks. All right. Okay, guys. This is the first time I've had gnocchi with chopsticks. Mmm. Mmm. That is good. How is it? It's good. <laughs> All right, Mabuhay squad. So now we are in a very special place to me. Um, it's the corner of Rachel and Iberville. And this building here is my old condo. Well, old apartment rather. It's not a condo. How long ago was this? This was maybe 14 years ago that I lived here in this building. So this here is the entrance. 2495. I bet we can't go in. Let's see. Is it open? Yeah, didn't think so. But I lived, if you go down in there and turn left, I was the first door. And I was about 
27 years old at the time. I don't know if my math is correct, but I lived here for about a year. And man, it was just so fun. Just a little studio apartment, very simple. I lived on a blow up mattress. I didn't even have a bed. Um, had a little like drawer for clothes, um, a little work desk, a little cute bathroom, a little kitchenette. I would often do my dishes in the bathtub though, <laughs> because I kind of was just put off doing the dishes. And my sink was so small that I could literally not do dishes properly. Um, but man, it's so good to be back. Okay, it was 14 or 15 years ago. It literally feels like I was just living here. Seriously, where has time gone? Uh, anyways, I wanted to show you a little piece of my personal history. It's this, this building here. Very simple. And I feel like it was a special place for me because it was really my very first experience of living alone. Like paying bills, having a job, paying for rent, all of that. Um, experiencing life as an adult. Um, it was in this building that I discovered the whole concept of Law of Attraction for all of you guys who follow that. And that started a whole chain reaction of me getting back into entertainment, quitting my job here in Montreal and recording an album and then eventually starting a YouTube channel. So yeah, good, good memories here. I'm happy to be back. It's amazing. The energy feels the same. Let's see, is there still a cafe next door? A little cafe restaurant? Oh, it looks like it. Let's see. Oh, maybe not. Well, this used to be a cafe. It looks like, what is it? I don't know what it is now. RJ, if you and I ever sell the farm, we're moving here. Can you? Well, I can buy it now. RJ, <laughs> I could buy it now. There is the Depaneur, which is basically a corner store, a com convenience store. Just next door, they had everything. I would often, if I had no food, I would go there and grab like sardines and, you know, instant noodles. The first job I got here, as I mentioned, it was in an office. I was working for an online jeweler. It was called ice.com, diamond.com, both websites. No longer exists anymore. Um, and I was paid... I believe 11.50 an hour, but I was able to survive and make enough money to like party every night because I loved working overtime. Like I had nothing to do after work and my job was pretty easy computer work. So I just stayed like five hour overtime and I managed to like ask my boss if he could give me time and a half. So can you imagine the box I was making? And of course I drank it all the way, singing karaoke and stuff. Um, but it was, it was fun. I mean, imagine being single in your mid to late twenties and also Montreal happens to be where I first lived gay, like literally like, you know, dating men. This was before like grinder and all of that, going to the bar, meeting men and, you know, just enjoying being young and free. That's what Montreal means to me. That's what this place means to me. It was fun. Good times. Actually, Montreal gave me a nice safe space to explore myself. You know what I mean? Again, like I, Montreal was a place where I could see what it's like to live out of the closet. Like nobody really knew me here. We're in the French side of Montreal. I was just, I could just be kind of anonymous here. And it was really beneficial to me as a young gay man. I remember the having to pull, bring out my garbage. This is where we had to put it. So after working at the office, the second job I got here in Montreal was at, in the food trucking business. So I was the guy who sat beside the trucking truck driver, wheeling in food from a warehouse into a chain of restaurants at 5 a.m. in the morning or 6 a.m. in the morning. I always had to get up at 3 a.m., guys. Oh my gosh, but you know what? I love that job because we were paid $19 an hour. Oh my gosh, the drinking money. Um, 
<laughs> so that was a fun job. Um, working as a cargador this is what it's called in the Philippines. It was so easy. It was just like lifting. I mean, it was hard physical labor, but I enjoyed it. I could sing. I could just like listen to music and lift heavy boxes early in the morning. And it was kind of cold a lot of times. And having to wheel the food from the trucks was an interesting skill, but it was fun. I do highly recommend for young people or for anyone of any age who need a fresh, hard restart in life, um, just like I did at the time that I moved to Montreal, to go move somewhere different, to just literally move somewhere far and different. Uh, start a new life. Like, it's never too late to start anew. Um, it's a scary thing to do, but it's also real exciting and an adventure. Mind you, of course, there it was a bit hard having to learn, for example, French, having to learn new skills, learn new places, make new friends. But you know what? Looking back now, that was so much fun. I woke up every day here in Montreal, even though I didn't have a lot. Just so grateful and blessed to be you know, living a very exciting and fulfilling life. This was the bus. Loved taking the bus. And gosh, the leaves though, guys. The autumn leaves and colors have been on point. We came at the best time of the year. This here is one of the nicest parks in the area. I used to take my Chihuahua Pinoy through here often. If you're a runner or a biker, Montreal is gorgeous. They've installed a lot of bike lanes in Montreal to encourage bike riding and kind of discourage taking the car. Um, but people are saying it's caused a lot of traffic. All right, guys, our final stop, La Banquise. This is a poutinerie. You can't visit the province of Quebec and not eat poutine. So, for those of you who are new to the poutine, it's a Canadian classic, originated here in the province of Quebec, so it's a French-Canadian dish, and its main constituents is fries, cheese curds, and gravy. But they have all kinds, like some with bacon, onion, Swiss cheese, smoked meat, pickles, like you can really choose and customize your poutine. Guys, behold, the classic poutine. Oh, look at that. That's a heart attack waiting to happen. But this got me through college. My first year, my one and only year of college that I did. I ate this every day. All right, guys, try it. RJ says he misses this. Go try it. Yeah, it needs cheese curds, which is this stuff. It's not exactly cheese. I mean, some places will just use ordinary cheese, but it doesn't taste the same. It needs to be these cheese curds. Mozzarella. And that's why it doesn't... I haven't seen poutines made in the Philippines so much, because getting these cheese curds is hard. But the gravy was tasty. Yeah. And usually these cheese curds will melt, like, over time. All right, guys, let's do this. Mmm. <gasps> Oh my, oh dear, look at that, goodbye diet. Okay, I ordered a Greek salad, so I don't feel so guilty. OMG, look at that, oh eat with your eyes, eat with your eyes. Mm. <laughs> oh my gosh, I forgot how salty that was. Mm. Mm. But then the natural sweetness of the potato mixed with the gravy. Mm. This poutine here at La Banquise, five Mabuhai stars. Guys, this is Canadian money. My favorite queen. RJ's favorite queen is the 20 bucks. It's plastic. And colorful. All right, Nika, Edmark. So, Edmark, this is your first experience of Canada here in Montreal. Yeah. Nika has been here before. 
did you guys enjoy? Super. 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 What's your impression of Canada? Oh, so nice. Clean. <laughs> and then everyone is pretty and handsome. Yay. I wish and I can speak in French. You can. You can learn. Yeah. <laughs> because I love it here. Yes. All right, Mabuhai Squad. So we're here at the airport and we've come to the end of our Montreal trip. Thanks, guys. Yes. Thank you. Um, just waiting for our flight now to Toronto and Mabuhai Squad. If you enjoyed today's vlog, be sure to hit that like button as it really helps us a lot to let YouTube know that you enjoy these vlogs and that they're worth sharing to new audiences. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Come join our Mabuhai Squad. We will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. We'll see you in the next vlog in Toronto, Canada. Love you guys. Bye. Mm.